Hi, this is Jeff Challen. So in the screencast, I'm going to get you started on this week's lab. The goal of lab this week is not to drive you nuts, although it might do that. The goal of lab this week is to prepare you to debug, uh, particularly in the CBTF type environment uh, where, you know, sometimes you might make a small mistake and it's hard to figure out. Um, so today's task, which again is designed to be fun, is going to stretch you a little bit. It's going to challenge you a little bit because what we've given you are a series of small problems. And at this point in the semester, if we described what to do, you would be able to solve these problems fairly easily. In fact, a couple of them are quite simple. However, we haven't told you what to do. So here's an example uh, from today's uh, problem set. So this is called mystery function. And all that the uh, write-up says about this is that this is just one function. That's all you know. You don't know what it's called. You don't know what arguments it takes. You don't know what it does. How do you figure that stuff out then? We haven't given you a new specification. So the reason we're doing this is because solving these problems requires that you look at things like compiler error messages. It also requires that you instrument the code a little bit, put in some of your own print statements to figure out what's going on. Once you've done some of those things, you will be able to solve these problems and you'll be able to figure out how the code is supposed to work. So let me show you how to get started. Okay, so here's what you're gonna see. And this class needs to implement a method and I don't know what method that is. I don't even know what it's called. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just try grading it. And this is fine, you know, we're experimenting here. Um, what's gonna happen is when this finishes, I'm gonna get a compiler error. And the reason is because the test suite is expecting me to have implemented this function. And so now I'm getting my first clues about what I need to do here. Because what I can see is that the, I'm, the uh, test suite is expecting a function called secret. And that um, method, you can see down here, method secret is supposed to take as its arguments uh, two integers. Now, this doesn't tell me yet what I'm supposed to return from the function, but it does give me information about the function signature. So let's get started here. So we're gonna uh, write, uh, and for now, I'm just gonna use string as a placeholder for my function. But I know that my function is supposed to take two integers. Um, okay, and, and again, right now we don't know what the return type is. So I could, actually, you know what? Let's mark it as void. There we go. Um, so I'm taking an int as a first argument and an int as a second argument. I'm just gonna return. Okay, so this is probably not right, um, but I'm still trying to gather more information. This process is sometimes known as reverse engineering. Um, and the reason it's called that is because I don't have a specification for this piece of uh, code that I'm trying to, to recreate. Instead, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to figure out how it works through experimentation. So I'm gonna play with it a little bit. I'm gonna try some things. Um, okay, so now I have another piece of information. So the compiler, this is another compiler error um, in the test suite, and the compiler says, incompatible types, void cannot be converted to int. What does this mean? Well, um, apparently, the test suite expects this secret function to return an int. So now I'm gonna change that to int. So now I've, I've discovered a little bit more about what this function needs to do. And for now, I'm just gonna return zero. I still don't know how this works. Okay, so now I have a function called secret. Um, it's uh, returning zero properly. Um, again, that's probably not the right value. It probably does something with its arguments, but I don't know what that is yet. And so I'm, I'm still, uh, you know, I'm still collecting information. I'm still going to try some stuff. Now I've made enough changes that it's actually compiling. But now what I'm starting to see is these familiar testing errors. So this says incorrect result, expected one, but found zero. So clearly the result that I'm returning from this function is wrong. And that makes sense because, you know, I would expect it to do something with its arguments. Okay. How do I collect more information at this point? So this is the next piece of the puzzle. These are really the two core techniques that you need to be able to solve the problems on this uh, lab homework assignment. The first technique is interpreting the compiler error messages to figure out what things are called. We're not gonna give you the name of the classes or the name of the methods or what their arguments are or how many constructors there are. You're gonna to have to figure that out by looking at the compiler error messages. And trust me, this is an incredibly useful skill. You will be working on one of the problems in a quiz and you will get a compiler error message and you'll be stressed out because you're in the CBTF, but because you've done this, you'll be like, oh, I know what that means. I know what I need to do. I must've misread the specification a little bit. I'll go fix it. 
don't worry, in the future we will still provide specifications for problems that you do on quizzes and on homework. Um, this is just something that we're, we're doing today because it's fun. Okay, so um, what I need to do here, um, so if I, if I look down and I look at this testing error message right here, um, this tells me something about the outputs, but what it doesn't tell me is what were the inputs? Um, and without knowing what the inputs are, I'm not going to be able to figure out what the output is. So let's print out, and this is totally okay to do, um, first plus uh, space plus second. So I'm, I'm printing off the arguments. Now I'm not changing the return yet, I just want to know what arguments the test suite is passing to my function so that I can figure out how to adjust the output appropriately. Okay, so when this finishes grading, um, what I'm going to see is that I'm starting, going to start to see some output from the test suite that it produces as it runs. Okay, so now I've got to combine two pieces of information. So I see that when it looks like when my function is passed zero and zero is the arguments, zero is the correct answer. Okay, so that's interesting. But if I'm passed one and zero, the result that was expected is one and I returned zero. So now I have a little bit more information about what to do. I'm gonna stop here, not give away the answer. It's not quite as simple as it might seem, but you're on the right track. So this is how you approach these problems. The first step is to get your code to compile by figure, using the compiler error messages to figure out what things are called and what the argument signatures are of various parts of the code. The second step is to examine the inputs that are being provided to your function or for the second two to your class and figure out what um, the test suite expects because that's going to lead you in the direction of being able to reproduce the code that we are trying to get you to do. So I hope this is fun. Um, you know, don't you know, don't go crazy about this. This is just you know a small lab programming exercise. Work together with other people in your lab, particularly on the last problem. I'll be quite impressed if anybody gets that problem correct because it's hard. Um, but you know, once you get to that point, feel free to work with the rest of the people at your table and the people at your lab. See if you can figure out exactly what that function is doing.